Hello, hello, and welcome. We're not going to do any intro song. We're just going to get right into things. I'm going to take a minute or two to pull up the chat. I um, put some images up there on the screen for you. Figured we would just jump right into um, the results of guess how many ginkgo seeds. So there were... I think seven people that guessed and the closest one was Ren. Congratulations, Ren. Um, I don't think I know you from my chat, but if you see this, um, go ahead and comment. Or if you watch this on a replay, leave a comment later and we'll get in touch over the next couple days and work out what you're comfortable with sharing, like your email, or your PayPal, or if you're really up for it, your address, I'll make you something and send you something. Um, but you let me know. And um, my comments are all approval only. So um, if you leave a comment only, I will see it. And my email address is out there on one of the shorts on my channel. I think, let me make sure it's still out there. I forgot now. So you can also email me. Yeah, it is. It is. So, um, like, you have to scroll back about one, two, three, nine, like, 11 shorts back, and you'll find it. So you can email me. Those are zeros in it. Um, so we'll figure it out. No worries there. Let me just pull up the chat here. There you guys are. Let me make sure um, it's turned sure. down. There we go. Make sure I can see all of you. All right. So we're all set up there. Sorry, my lamp's in the way. I'll get it out of the way here in a moment. So yeah, you guys, I'm exhausted. 722 seeds. That's the most seeds um, I've picked up. So the rake method very much works. Hey, um, Choppa. So that little note there on the side's kind of small, but I'll make it bigger. Make it even bigger like this so we can really see it. Hey, Cloud Kicker, good to see you. So, yesterday, 722 seeds. Again, congrats, Ren, for guessing the closest. So, we're at a total count for ginkgo seeds of 1,978. So, now I'm rethinking like just push hard and go get like another almost 500 seeds and do 2,000 and no, it wouldn't even be that many. It would be like uh, a little bit of math, like what, 25 plus 25, like 50 seeds. Like I should just go push fit to get about 50 seeds and um, do 2,024 ginkgo seeds total. So that's what I'm thinking. It's rainy today, though, so it's not a good day to go out and gather seeds. In fact, it's great that it's raining because it kind of soaks the rain, soaks into what's down on the ground and kind of plumps them up. But I'm also running short on time because today's our Friday. Um, so tomorrow's supposed to be an OK day. So kind of tomorrow's my only day to go. And then the next day we take off to Hiroshima on the bullet train. So I pretty much have tomorrow to go do it but I think that would be really great and the ones that I gathered yesterday I've already rinsed and put in my freezer or not my freezer my refrigerator so I already rinsed them <sighs> got all the gunk off from them put them in with the peat moss put a little bit of moisture in there and then stuck them in my refrigerator for three months of stratification so I'm really wiped out but um, I thought I would give you guys some updates on my numbers. I also picked up um, our bunny today from the vet. So I've had two days in a row of taking our rabbits to the vets to get them spayed. And we took the white Angora bunny yesterday. I dropped off the gray mini lop today. And yesterday the white Angora bunny did not get spayed. They went to put her under. She started having breathing complications. They tried to... Um, stick the tube down her throat. It wouldn't go. They ended up giving her oxygen. Like I can't imagine what a little bunny oxygen mask looks like, 
but they gave her oxygen and she's doing fine, but she did not get her surgery and she's on antibiotics for the next few days. So, um, I picked her up today and then dropped off the other bunny. So hopefully I'll hear back this afternoon that her surgery went well and at least one will be done. And then I'll have to reschedule, the white one's name is Yuki. I'll have to reschedule Yuki's surgery for after the new year, they told me. So Yuki means snow in Japan. And the other bunny's name is Ami for rain because she's gray. So just a busy, busy day and trying to get these seeds while they're available. Chapa, you might understand that because you were doing all the walnuts. But like, you got to go when it's good. And while I was out um, amongst the trees, I found a sawtooth oak tree and picked up some acorns. And then I spilled most of the acorns, but I was able to um, gather a few more from what I had dropped. And I got those ready to show you guys. So I'm just about to clear off the little windowsill here and pull out the acorn seeds to show you. And, um, and then we'll see what we do after that. I don't have a ton of time for you guys today, but I do have a little bit of time. And then I got to start making my packing list for going out of town, taking the bullet train. So with taking the bullet train, you never want to overpack. Plus, I'm not over overpacker. So, so far on my list is money, swimsuit, passport, toothbrush. I mean, they have toothbrushes there, but that's pretty much it. Swimsuit, money, passport, toothbrush. That's all you need. Anything else you can acquire when, wherever you are. Of course, you know, change of clothes, stuff like that. But yeah, we're going to be down in Hiroshima for, we're leaving on the 17th and we're coming back the 22nd. So five nights and the bullet train is about, I think it's about six hours down there. I guess I should could close this and show you guys these. I mean, you've seen them before, but let me close all the little, the little images there. I'll put this one over here. Well, no, it doesn't really fit. Covering up that there. There we go. That should be good for you guys. See how that fits there. Um, now it's really small. I can make it a little bigger. Oh, no. Let me pick, highlight someone's name. Now it's zooming in. Oops. There we go. So there's that. We'll get it all set up here. Okay, that looks pretty good. You forgot to change your music to play and you're a bit debating calling off work because of it. Uh, well, I mean, Chapa, that's your call. Like, you know, you know this time of year is good for money. Oh, and you guys can see some of the edge of my window now and some of the the plants over there because I think I zoomed out extra now. Well, that's fine. There's some plants over here to the edge of my window cell. Sorry, they're kind of cut off a bit there. And uh, now you guys get to see my window cell. So I'll bring back. So you guys have seen these. I moved everything to smaller plates. They've pretty much are done except for like one final coat. So they've got a nice rounded edge and I made these little things to go in the bottom of the plates the other day. So um, they glued down like it's three toothpicks glued down, then a little piece of paper to kind of protect the backs from the glue, then that. So they kind of set a little bit up like they don't set flat on the plate. So if a little bit runs over the edge, um, it works. So this one, that's this one here. This one here. So I watched a movie and finished these up last night. Almost one more coat. This one here. All right. So I move those off to the side. And you can see the rest as I move them to the side here. Is 
this one is the one my daughter did. And this one, I think, this is, was like the one that I think came out the best and kind of what I based doing some of the others on was this one. Like the um, sealant. And there was one that got sacrificed. So the one that got sacrificed um, didn't, like, it. I did two different kinds of sealants on it. And they didn't, the chemically, they didn't mix. And it ended up, like, starting peeling off from the backing. and just became a big gooey mess. So I finished this butterfly one. And I've got the um, the sealant that I really like. So this one here which I understand I know it's a Japan brand but this is the one I really like it does a really nice job on the clear coat and it's nice and thick thick and smooth and and good and so I'm going to do um, three coats with that sealant and then I'm going to put a very very thin layer of this Mod Podge dishwasher safe sealant over it so um, so it's just Washable. I find that maybe that's the combination that's working the best. So this is with um, two layers of the clear Japan sealant. So I'm going to do one more. And then this one is with three layers of the clear sealant and one layer of the dishwasher sealant. So you can see it still stays shiny and bright and um, it's gone through, a, well, it hasn't gone through a water test yet. I guess that's the next thing I should do. But yeah, that's all the stuff I've been doing. I've been watching movies and working on those in the evening. Because getting all these seeds is just very, it's very exhausting work. And I've got a bunch more butterfly ones to do. And I've got some other kits. So that's been like a good pastime. And I've been working on these um, dolphins for my daughter. So this one, I didn't use the clear sealant. I used, I've been trying to use up my last bottle of like this other one. So I don't like this one because it gives them more of a frosted look. And they are double-sided. This happened yesterday too that it kind of stuck. So they're double-sided. So I've got some little um, cuticle scissors. I'll cut off that part that got kind of stuck. But um, yeah, I've been trying to use up this frosted one. So I've been working on those. Her school mascots, dolphins. So that's why I've been working on those. And instead of giving them as Christmas gifts to all her teachers and everything, because, well, I ran out of time. It takes time for sealants to, to dry. She'll just give them as New Year gift. So here's the little stack of plates that I got. So my little setup here with my toothpicks. And then they just help hold the coaster off the surface of the plate. So that's what's been working. I tried to get to um, use these bowls, but they're not working. But we're going to use one of these bowls for something today. And this is all the, all the diamonds for the butterflies. So we're going to use this bowl for something we're going to look at here in a moment. And then I got a... Um, like a holder for all these diamonds kits. So you can, and I've got like the lineup on a paper because I don't like sticking stickers to things. So I just wrote it down on a piece of paper what the, like what the corresponding number and letter and all that is. All right, and this here I haven't opened yet. I'll maybe open this. So there we go. We've almost got a clean, a clear window cell. So here is um, I was using that heavy, that heavy package to flatten this out, and it looked like it worked really well. So here is our painting. I forgot what we called it. Um, Be stole the wrench. So I might go in and do some touch up on it, but um, it's all dry now. 
and this area is flat but you can see like there's just a little bit of ridges or maybe that in there and as you can see this is a glitter glue in here um, between the eyes like some red glitter glue because people stay up too late and reading chats and fighting on the internet and all that and we've got a cloudy day today and part of me i'm putting on some chapstick it's that time of year so um yeah they um i've got red glitter glue from people you know having red eyes from not sleeping well or angry ranting and yelling on their live streams you know and it's like these are all the eyes of the chat watching the bestowment of the wrench or whatever you make it what you what your interpretation is i got really philosophical about it the other day today today i'm more like i give no fucks because <laughs> i'm just so tired so tired it was so much work to process all those seats and just so much going on with um omni again that's the the rabbit the white rabbit um with her complications and having to make sure she's doing okay so i'll open the package first we'll come back to this little white bowl here in a moment so we're gonna build something So this is a rack for like holding your pan lids in a drawer, but we're going to try to stand it upright and maybe put like something to kind of hold it more in place and see if we can stack all these plates on it, right? So I stopped spreading them out over the whole surface of my windowsill here because we've got other projects we got to get into. should just call this girl who can't build builds things because <laughs> that's kind of legitimately what's going on here is I'm not a building sort but you make do with what you got my husband's over over on the ship right now doing something doing some special project he's supposed to be off but that's how it goes sometimes oh and I saw some things going on in chat before I fell asleep um I saw that I was teaming up with Sable to go after Brett. No, that's not true. I went after Brett last year, kind of like a little after last year, because he said stuff last Christmas Eve. And I followed up with that maybe like in February. So I've already been down that road. What else did I see? Oh, that Spoon uses Spoon's husband's money. So this has gone around more than once. Like, do you guys just, I mean, the person who said it, you work, you're a woman and you work. So you don't think other women don't work and don't have their own money? Like, I have my own money. I do what I want with my own money. Like, but whatever, whatever, you know, people are just going to say whatever misconceptions they want to believe. I think for plates, they need to be about every other one or every th third one. I'm going to check it out here in a moment. All right, so that's too close. That's way too close. I mean, it kind of works, right? 
but I think it just makes them too close. Hey, see you later, Choppa. You have a, I mean, it's the middle of the day here, but you have a good night. Okay, that, so that's going to be much better there. So now we have to count and do some math. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve more. There's fourteen total. So if we do them every two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, okay, so gotta expand this out some more. This one will come back in a moment. Eight, nine goes right here. So hold on, we'll count it this way. Nine, ten, eleven. I believe. All right. Try that out. So if I miscount it, how far to expand it out, then um, I'll have to redo these here. They're not perfectly even either. Like this one's got a bit of a curve. Maybe if I flip around, it'll just be a little bit better. Oh, hold on, you guys. Doorbell. Doorbell. Probably a package. Ah, oh, it's my husband. So hold on here. I'm just going to wait till he comes up so he knows that I'm live streaming. So just give me a moment here. And I'll go back to building um, the thing there. Let me close the door so he doesn't see the project because then he'll want to take over because he likes building stuff. All right. He can order his own things off Amazon to build. All right, we're just gonna catch him outside the door here. Yeah, just super rainy, rainy day, you guys. Not nice at all. Well, it is nice. It's a beautiful rainy day. Just drizzly, misty rain. Here he is. Hey, just so you know, I'm live streaming. All right. No, no, you're not bothering me. I just wanted to let you know. No, I got everything out of the car. Thank you. All right, so there you guys go. All right. Yep. 
Yeah, see that one? That one there is really kind of wonky. And since it's metal, it should be bendable. Hold on here. There. All right, better. Better. So, every two... Oh, and this one's kind of a bit crooked too, so let me straighten that one out. There you go. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Just a couple more to go. Then we'll realize that we count it wrong and have to redo part of it. Sorry about it being all clingy, clingy, clingy. And that is correct. So hold on here. And then this one goes here. Well, that might have been a little bit too much bending. Hold on here. Just put it back over there, I guess. And then bend it back.
it got a little tangled in the cord here. Okay, very close here on this one. Uh, sorry, you guys, for all the little bit you hear. You know how it goes with building things. There's always a bit of finagling to it. There we go. All right. So that one's fixed. That one was the hardest because it's got these bars up here. So it has this bar up on top. Oh, no, no. Sorry, I got it crossed over. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> just get that one out of the way for a moment. Ah, so close. And hold up here. This cord's a bit all over the place. Just fix that a bit there. All right. Gonna take this off screen for a moment here. All right, there we go. Just locking it in a little better. All right. And maybe straightening it out a little more for that last one. Okay, so then move everything up. Just gonna have it off screen for a bit here while I fix things. Every two.
Okay, that's good. Hey, Nursty. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm building. Sorry, I took it off screen for a moment. So I'm building this. It's a normally a drawer pan holder, but I'm going to set it vertical so I could put all my little plates on it for um, these art projects that I've been doing. But I was having a little bit of complications there with... Um, with one of the shelving and then I did math wrong and um, have to readjust it. So yeah, that's kind of what's going on. And then we're going to talk about sawtooth oak trees as soon as I get done. So a little bit of delay on talk about sawtooth oak trees and how to plant oak trees from acorns while I fix the shelf. shelves and they go every other one I know I need to expand a little more so is that it one here I'm just gonna kind of lay it out I'm a very visual person so one two one here one two one here find that that one fall down I know where it goes then one two one here One here, and then one, two, one here. Oh, did I? Oh, and then I lost one here. Here, and then one, two, one here. Okay, one more, one more. All right, there we go. So then one, two, one here. Okay, they should all turn out about right now. Um, so here in Japan, Nursty, I've been working with trees and a couple nurseries. Well, last year I worked with papayas and different types of monsterias like um, Thai constellation and half moons and tiger monsterias and papaya trees and then going into 2024 i'm considering working with ginkgo trees and moringa trees i've got kind of a whole goal well you see it there on my little piece of paper to plant 2024 trees in the year of 2024 because everyone's going to be going absolutely bonkers with the political stuff so i just want to focus on something not political and something very positive I'll have to adjust that one there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, as soon as I'm done with this here, we'll um, talk about acorn trees. Because now's a great time to go out and pick up acorn seeds. Sorry, oak trees. And some of my other live streams, like I've been planting moringa seeds on my previous live streams. So you can definitely see any that maybe are titled Moringa. I kind of do a bunch of different things. I know you've never been in my chat, Nurse D, and you've kind of been, I don't know, in a bunch of different chats. But um, hmm. so it's supposed to go here, but that's bars there. So yeah, sometimes I'm doing craft projects, sometimes I'm doing plant stuff. It's just a variety of different things. Uh, moringa with a O. 
It's there on my little piece of paper, but I'll write it here in the chat for you. So it's a green tree with a leafy green, green leaves. I mean, obviously, sorry, I'm concentrating while doing that. And it's got a lot of health benefits, but it's normally a tropical climate plant. I've never worked with it before. So I don't know all the health benefits of that. I just stumbled upon it, realized I could get seeds easily. And since I'm in a tropical climate, thought I would try to grow a whole bunch of them. This one I think is going to need some adjustment too, just to get around that bar like the top did. Like I'm having a hard time getting it in there. It's always something like this. So let me just take this off here and see what I can do. So I saw, Nursty, you had a falling out with Queenie. And I don't know if you know this or not, but she's kind of my YouTube mortal enemy and has been since February of 2022. So I have a problem. I don't have anyone blocked from my chat, Nursty. That's not high roll. I don't have any mods here. I don't have anyone blocked. I don't time people out or anything like that. But um, was it that she, and I only lurked a little bit. Because was it that she accused you of something or she didn't believe you on something? I know it was like a lot, not that long ago, but like a week or so ago that you guys had your falling out. I mean, I'm sorry you had that experience. That's kind of what happened to us in February of 2022. So, I mean, I kind of understand that. And I saw she was asking, like, if anyone had seen you, like, seen you, like, I know you were at um, DOA's, one of his court dates, like, many of us have seen you. I think she's very lost on a lot of the lore, especially TPC lore and 1776 lore. Yeah, I can see that nurse D where she confuses information. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of her motive, nurse D. She um, picks random people and goes after them. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. So I'm sorry you had that experience. Um, what chats do you hang out in now? Like, I haven't really seen you since, oh, it'd be a little over a year now since... DOA kind of unexpectedly turned on me. So it was um, December 6th last year. DOA was listening to Game Dev and one day was driving down the highway and started talking about me like that I was, I remember because it's so stupid that I was dishonest or something. Like, I, I mean, I didn't do anything dishonest to him and I supported him. And when he took off to Teos, New Mexico, I kind of just lost interest in watching him anymore and um, started like just going to other chats. Like it was no like negative thing. I just wasn't interested in watching anymore. Like for no reason, I just, you know, didn't find the content interesting once uh, kind of 1776 ended. So... Yeah, and then he listened to Game Dev. And as you know, you know, because you've been around for a while, Game Dev's not really the most honest person either. 
And that's how that worked out. Well, you just kind of, kind of all over. See, that's kind of where I'm at now. Like, right? Like, I'm like, okay, you know, all the things we all cared about, right? Kind of have ended. And um, YouTube's just for kind of hanging out and chilling and, you know, visiting different spaces. And I don't know what's all the fighting about anymore. I mean, I guess everyone's going to start fighting again. when. So I think I'm going to have to take pliers to this one to fix it. We'll just leave it like this for now. It's going to bother me, but whatever. I'm tired of messing with this. So like, you know, people are going to fight when the... Um... This might be like a honeydew list to fix that one. So yeah, it's going to stand vertically like this. Sorry for the little bit of the camel wobble there. And then I think I'm going to have to put some of these little things here to kind of hold it upright more, right? Maybe take one of these out, see how they work. It's not supposed to go vertical. We're making things work in ways it's not supposed to. So let me see these. What are these? Ah, all that black paint, probably lead. Yeah, last I saw game dev though, Nurse D, he seemed to be in a pretty good place. He was hanging out with uh, Mona and uh, Wendy of Arizona and playing, um, doing like puzzles together and playing games and trying to be more of a positive person, which I mean, that's good for him. I kind of um, lurked and worked on some of the jigsaw puzzles a bit. That's kind of where I'm at now too, is just a bunch of lurking because there's just so much, I don't know, division and there's, people think there's sides. I think there's factions, not really sides. So there, that's how, oh, that works really well with those little stopper things. Let's put a bunch of those on. So I don't think there's sides. I think there's factions. That's just what I think. And uh, Nurse D. Oh, DOA. D. So Game Dev lied about you when DOA kicked him. Yeah. That's kind of what he does. Game Dev. So, I don't know. I think Nurse D, you have some experience with the military. The last thing I heard Game Dev say about me was that he had a friend that was a general in the military. And that his friend said that active duty, his mil his fake general friend, right? That active duty military and their spouses aren't to have allowed to have personal Facebook accounts. And that cracked me up because like our base has lots of like official base Facebook groups. You know, there's the military spouses community that's on Facebook my husband's whole command like communicate with each other through Facebook and he said that I was going to get game dev said that I was going to get court martialed for having a Facebook account it cracked me up like just so outlandish and then when I like screen recorded it and put it on YouTube he filed a copyright strike on me so like I don't know I just kind of have this you know vibe of like if you're gonna say stuff then you know don't I mean I guess like um you know like stand by what you say like that's why all my lives aren't private or anything like anything I've said I've kept out there there all right so I think I can like glue it or something, right? Like make sure they stick a little better here. Go stand it up again, probably wobble my camera like crazy. I'll do better this time. So there, there. And then, now watch all my plates are too big and they fall through. They kind of are. <laughs> all right, hold on. I got a bigger plate. Cause you know, we gotta test this. So there, I'll be able to put my plates on and they'll be able to dry, dry. All, all of this stuff will be able to dry. So I'll have to like rig up some string or something for the smaller plates so they actually fit without falling through. But be able to put everything 
on the on the shelves. I mean, they do kind of balance over here in the corner. Be able to put all the coasters on the shelving. Oh, I did not see that. So, um, because she doesn't know all the 1776 lore, Nurse D, she has a belief that um, whatever Big D and Hippie Mama are telling her. Wow, that's, um, wow. So she doesn't know like all bandits like history, I don't think she's ever like read the the witness statement, which is on Rumble. So you probably remember this. Like, um, remember there was someone around named Evie, 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 I.E., who also went by like Rimraw and the Chuggy Show and all that. And she got the FO, the FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act, to get the... Um, court documentations on Bannett's case and then she read the victim statement which I don't agree with reading a victim statement online but she did and that was the one telescope got it from her and then he read it online and then he read it on boss talk podcast so that but anyways originally Rinra Evie's video is still out there on um rumble yeah yeah I mean she was a bit cuckoo but it's there, so it can be referenced. Wow. And then, um, like, yeah, I'm kind of like I'm observing um, kind of all this Nurse D because Bandit made a Facebook group called Freedom Outlaws a bit ago, over a year ago, High Geek Squad. So Bandit made a Facebook group called Freedom Outlaws under his business name Mandel M-A-N-D-L Transport and there are multiple people in that Facebook group and the reason why I know this is because I've been lurking in that Facebook group for over a year watching everything and um, so like Dixie's in that Facebook group um, Crystal Sanderson's in that Facebook group Big D's in that Facebook group Frank Ledford's in that Facebook group with Branch Crew Ministries, like all these characters we know. And like Dixie and Crystal Sanderson are always there like, we love you, Bandit. We support you, Bandit. And like, oh my gosh. So like, I just see so many factions here dividing. So much like behind the scenes or maybe in the scenes manipulations of people like, uh, it's a lot a lot yeah but no I did not see Queenie apologize to Bandit and that's that's a that's a really like not good move not good optics there uh, she also doesn't like I pull I pull this up to talk about it another day because I really like this stuff is really triggering for me because I am emotional abuse victim and sexual assault victim and so I did like gather some of it up to talk about it but then it was just really hard to get into um but um there was a convicted pedophile that was in the save the children movement that queenie started and i think her name her last name strickland and she ran a daycare and she used to take pictures of children that um, came to her daycare facility and she was hanging out with a guy this is on Twitter um, she was hanging out with a guy that um, like murdered his wife and child and they were there in Ottawa for the protest for Save the Children Queenie's protest and I don't think she's all that familiar with that as well. But just like some really, like she talks about the one that came to the gate and got turned away. But she doesn't know about the one that was there in Ottawa that got found out. And I know I put that information, I think, oh, it's on my own Twitter. Uh, like if you scroll back a bit. Because I think Nurse D, you, you're on Twitter. 
Hold on, I might have it as an image here. Oh yeah, I do. So I, I brought this up to talk about it. And then um, it was just, it was too emotional heavy to get into. So I didn't block out anyone's names or anything. I'm just gonna make this bigger. So yeah, this is from Twitter, but there's multiple pieces. So yeah, I'm gonna leave this up for just a second. Maybe make a note, check that in Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, definitely do. Uh, the, the court documentation and everything's on Twitter. This was, you know, back when it first started. So, yeah, I put that here on my um, prism to talk about the other day. And then, um, and then it was just too much to get into. Now I don't know how to close it. Oh, there we go. Like... So my personal opinions on it, like, I know, like, I'm very, like, non-supportive of convicted pedophiles. And so when Bandit was um, being allowed back in Red Squirrel's chat, I did disassociate from Red. Not that we were ever associated, but I did say, look, I can't be in your chat if Bandit's going to be around. I just can't. I know his case. I've read it, unfortunately. And I can't be around this chat. So that was right before the other information came out. Um, and so I don't know what to think about that information. And um, like, I'm not going to get into discussing it. But um, like, we all just know Bandit's case so well. And, you know, Bandit served his time. He got out of jail after serving his time. And by our laws, you know, he's allowed to have a job and he's allowed to live somewhere. And while some of us might disagree with that, um, you know, that maybe he deserves to still be in jail or, you know, other harmful things. The law is what the law is. And he's allowed to be out in the world. Um, I don't think he should be allowed out in the world, but I can't change what the laws are. Um, like we have to fight to get the laws changed. But what I really believe is that it is very bad optics to allow him in your, your social, like your political movement or your any type, any type of, of protest or activism of any kind. And that same goes true. I think there's one that's in DC on the lefty side of the fence. His name's like Luke something. And he's also a convicted pedophile. Like, it's just bad optics. And and those individuals, convicted pedophiles, um, like, they don't have to be involved in activism, right? Like, okay, maybe they're human and they care about something, but it, um, you should understand that you have committed, you have been convicted of this crime and you have that record, which you will always carry. That's why we have a lifetime registry for sex offenders is because it's a, it's a lifetime tag to that human. And um, you should be, I guess, self-aware if you're a convicted pedophile. And you should understand that there are just things that are bad optics for you to be involved in. And I guess like if you had, if you were a convicted pedophile and you had strong political opinions, you could do something behind the scenes, I guess, like, I don't know, print flyers or something. I don't know, because like, I, I'm thinking about like, if I ran a, like a protest thing, like an activism thing, and someone told me they were a level three convicted sex predator, and they wanted to be involved, I would probably tell them they needed to start running away. Like that would just be me. Like I would not let someone like that around me, around people I'm working with, around anything that I'm doing. Because I, I was reading, I was listening to a different drama circle the other day because they were talking about this because almost every drama circle has such, such a person in their circle that gets found out. And um, this one 
YouTube video, this other drama circle I was listening to was talking about like what these sexual predators want to do is they want to get in with a group and, and make friends and build those connections and I'm not saying that every single one of them will be reoffending, but that's how they get access is by befriending people. And, um, and you, you know, you, I mean, I don't know. It's very hard. Like I personally would not befriend a sexual predator if I knew of their convicted crimes for no reason. Like if I had one in my family, I would disassociate from them. If I had one in a friend's group, I would disassociate from them. Like, I just can't be, like, personally, like, on a personal level, because of my past and my history, I cannot be associated with with such a person. Because I can't understand why you would do such a crime, especially against an a underage a child. Like, I just, I can't understand why you would harm an innocent life like that. And, and maybe that's really personal to me because no matter like, you know, victims often call themselves survivors and I get that like, yeah, okay, fine. I'm a survivor. I'm still alive. I'm still here, but I will be forever changed because of what happened in my past. In some ways, I'm still always a victim. It will never change. Um, yeah, but see, that's after the fact, right, Nurse D? Like, that's after they've already committed the crime. See, I can't overlook the choice to commit the crime. For me, I can't overlook that. Like, um, doesn't matter how much they've been punished, how much time they've served, how much, um, like, even if, you know, a lobotomy or whatever, like, Whatever happens after the crime's committed, it never changes. They chose, they made the choice to commit the crime and hurt someone. I feel kind of the same way about murderers too. Like um, people that plan and plot murder. Once you've done that, you even if you, you know, you get 25 years or whatever, or you get out or whatever, whatever, you still made the choice to end someone's life. And you can't take that back. I don't think I could ever forget or forgive someone for that if that makes sense it's a very deep sort of question and I guess it's very personal for people um any type of violent crime and I do think sex offense is are a violent crime because it's non it's non-consensual and it's with especially child even adult ones but even child ones like it's non-consensual and in that way it's violent to me so in my opinion but um, that's some very deep stuff there. And we're, we're going to talk about acorn seeds. But this shelf seems to work well. It's going to help save so much space. They're going to be able to dry. I'm going to have my spouse do some touch-ups on it. So I'll just set this aside over here. All right, so let me get these seeds here in the little bowl. And check my time. Um, yeah, I'm using it to dry, um, so I'll pull out some over here. So there was an auction for a diamond art painting and uh, someone asked me why I wasn't bidding and I'm like, no offense to the person who made the diamond art or anything, but I'm like, why would I bid on something I can make myself? And I've never been into diamond art stuff. So um, I ordered a kit and I ordered like a small kit just to, um, just to try out. So I ordered coasters to try out making. And I have a bunch here because, you know, you get coasters, a bunch of coasters. I'm trying to find the one that I really like. I don't see it at the moment. But yeah, so I ordered coaster diamond art kit to make those. And then I really got liking it. So then I ordered like a butterfly. And then my one daughter's got me doing like dolphins because their school mascots dolphins. And she wants to give dolphin gifts to people. Hi, PLS. 
So the um, once you do them, I like to put a sealant over them, like a poly, like a like I've got Mod Podge, but um, I find I've ordered like five different sealants, and this particular one here, I've decided I like best, which is a Japan brand. But um, so I do three layers of that, and then I do a layer of this dishwasher Mod Podge, and that seems to work out best. So yeah, I kind of got into this and it's become like my evening activity is to work on these. I didn't think I would like it that much, but it's very like, I don't know, kind of a bit soothing. Oh yeah, I've got a whole set of the butterfly ones I'm working on. And I've got like some sea life ones and some mosaics. I bought like four more kits, but I kind of needed a way, that's what the shelf is. I needed a way to be able to stack them up because when I set them out to dry, they take up, this is a window cell here in my house. They take up my whole windowsill. So I need it a way to um, stack them up. PLS, I said earlier in the live stream that um, the seed count was 722 and you were not the closest. Someone else was. Someone named Ren, who I've never seen in my chat, but that's who was the closest. All right. So this is Sawtooth Acorns here that I just happened to find yesterday when I was picking up ginkgo seeds. And when you pick up acorns for an oak tree, you want to do a float test. So those that sink are viable. So these down here have sunk, they're viable, and any that float are not, those are bad. So I was just go pour this out here in this clear dish. So see, there's two there that are floating. So the two that are floating, you just toss. Because they are not good. And then very much like what we were doing with the ginkgo seeds. you want to do stratification with your acorn seeds. So stratification is a way to overwinter plants. And I think I left my peat moss in the kitchen because I was doing the ginkgo seeds in there. So I'll go grab it here. And let me find a Sharpie here. I'm just going to count the seeds here. Five, 10, 15, 20, 26, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. So about 45. And I think there's actually just a cap in here. Just toss that too. And hold on here. I'm going to open the window and pour this water out the window. because it's really full. You can see that. Make sure I don't dump these seeds out there. Easy peasy. And 
And while, while those are sitting here, you guys are sitting for a moment, I'm going to go find what I did with the peat moss. and I had left it in the kitchen. So thanks for waiting for out there. <laughs> well, uh, uh, um, P P L S I am 12 floors up and out my window is the balcony. So it's, I just poured the water into plants right outside my window. But that is funny. So make sure you guys can see there. So, yep, you just put your seeds into your little Ziploc baggie. over there because we might use a little bit more of that water and then you take your peat moss and you don't have to use such a small baggie I just knew that I only had a few seeds and because I have Almost 2,000 ginkgo seeds in my fridge. I know I'm running out of room. So I just want it kind of a little, a little, a little fun side experiment. So this is um, sawtooth um, oak tree. So you make a big mess on your little table there. And, you know, you just add some peat moss. I'm going to take it off screen just so I've stopped making such a mess. Bring it back here in a moment. So with the little bag or the big bag, whatever you're using, first I like to make sure there's some air in it and then kind of close it up, make sure it's closed really good and then shake it up so that all the seeds get coated in some peat moss. And while that's kind of sitting for a moment, I'm just going to sweep this up while I got the little bag here. Yeah, I would say probably don't use such a tiny Ziploc bag PLS. I would say like use a, um, I really like like the quart size bags best. I know with some of the ginkgo seeds, I've been using gallon bags and those are a little bit um, hard. I think they're harder to wiggle around and stuff. So I think quart sides are best, but I just wanted a small project here. So you shake it all up really good. Make sure your seeds are all mixed up in there. They're all coated good. And then you want this, see how it looks very dry, which might be hard to see because of the, um, the glare and just how far it is. But anyways, this looks very like dry and what you want it to look like is almost brownie, brownie batter. 
I almost said brownie bladder. So I'm just gonna put I'm gonna put a little like crease in this plate here because you know we don't want to dump water all over. And I'm just gonna add some of the it could be Ina water, it doesn't have to be like water you were soaking the seeds in. I'm just using what's convenient here. And then you just kind of mix it up a little bit more and you want it like a like almost like brownie flat like brownie batter is like the best explanation I can give for it. Like you want it wet but not too wet. You want it to kind of stick together but not really stick together. And it's not really a precise measurement kind of thing. You kind of want it pretty much like a damp ground because you're kind of creating recreating the um, the scenario. And then once you have it mixed up to what you kind of like where it's not too dry and not too wet because if it's too wet, just add more peat moss. Then I like to suck the air out of it. Make sure I have it zipped good and closed because especially with the ginkgo, they're smelly. And then you just put that in your refrigerator. So let that set in your refrigerator for like three months. You, Yeah, that's what I just did. So I just took all the air out of the bag. Uh, you don't have to. It just, uh, <laughs> when you start putting a bunch of seeds in your refrigerator, uh, you're going to be kind of cramped for space. Unless you've got a whole fridge you can dedicate to seedlings. And I'm sorry, Momo's not here. So Momo, this is more for you. Maybe you watch a replay. But the six little seedlings that didn't take with the Moringa I put into a Ziploc baggie here. And I'm just checking on them. See if any of them have done anything. So far, no. So they'll just stay here. I don't expect anything because we had them going for so long. But I wanted to give them a chance. They're really cold too. I'm going to try to put them in a warmer place. Um, the... Um, the acorn seeds? No, not really, because we're going to put them in the fridge, and that simulates like the winter time. So it's called, I'm going to put the word here so you can look it up. It's called stratification. Stratification. There we go. So it's like overwintering tree seeds, and not all tree seeds. Um, oak, um, ginkgo that I just learned. Like, I just look up. Um, how, like when you find seeds of a tree, just, you know, Google how to, how to, what to do with that particular tree. I mean, you do have to identify the tree, but yeah, you're kind of making like a fake winter. You can, you don't have to put it in your fridge. If you have a cool garage, you could put it in there. I don't have a cool garage and our outside temperatures fluctuate too much. Like you, if you have consistent outside temperatures, what you do not want is the seeds to freeze. You just want them to maintain a coldness, um, consistent, like not, you know, spot on perfect, but pretty cool. So above freezing and cold cause you're re re like recreating winter. And if you have a decent winter outside, that's pretty mild then I guess you could put them out there. Our temperature goes up and down and it's just too fluctuating. So that's why I use my refrigerator. Yeah, and for some places it might get too cold outside where you are, like with the ground freezing and snow and that. And not saying that seeds won't take because obviously force came about, right? Like they just didn't magically appear. But this is for the like highest success rate. Um, for your seedlings is when you have it kind of in a controlled environment. So, yeah, and, you know, there's going to be different information. I found different information about ginkgo seeds, too. Some only do a month of stratification. Some people do two months. Some people do three months. I'm probably going to keep track and at the month's part, start pulling out like four seeds at a time once a week and, and trying them out and see how it goes. Because I've been reading even some university papers and no one has like a do it for X number, do stratification for X number of days. With uh, these acorns, I'm probably going to do acorns usually don't require as long. I'll probably go to two months on them. So it's very important like what I put here. Like I know these are acorn seeds, but if you don't, if you can't remember stuff like that, maybe put, uh, you know, the name of the seed on it. Put the date 
you put them, either harvest them or you bag them, try to keep it pretty close. Like I picked these up yesterday. So that's why I just put, I like to put the date I pick them up because I'm always really quick to, to process seeds. And then I like to put how many are in there just so I know, but you don't have to, but you know, put the name, the date, so you can keep track of things better. And then maybe keep like, like my little yellow note here. Keep yourself some kind of note. Yeah, I would not put them in the freezer. Some people like say to do that, but I think you get a lower germination rate um, if you freeze them. And some seeds don't like to be freeze. Now, if you look up a seed that wants to be frozen, then definitely do that. But acorns and um, like oak trees and ginkgo trees don't like to be frozen. So if you find an apple, apple trees, well, because that's what I have a lot of experience with is apple trees. Apple trees will sprout in your fridge. So they want to be, they want to be put in the fridge, but they will sprout in your fridge. And with apple seeds, you can just do the whole paper towel method. So kind of hard to see here because it's all wet in that maybe you see a little better here but I've got some seeds here in this plastic bag and this is exactly how you would do apple seeds as long as you're not getting like a genetically modified apple and um, you have viable seeds but you could like try this with apples you get from the store so you just put the apple I'll take it all out here so these are moringa seeds like leftovers from the last batch we did. I'm just trying to give them more of a chance to maybe try to sprout. So you put your apple seeds, now I've spilled them out, but that's okay. So you can put your apple seeds between paper towels and then put them in your fridge and they will sprout out in your fridge. And then once they sprout, you can then put them in soil. Oh, you want to do apple seeds? Yeah, so uh, Nurse D, there's, oh, you know, YouTube's got so much information. Uh, you could just search like YouTube for you know how to start um, apple trees so see like this um, particular seed and sorry let me pull my plant light over here let me turn it on now it's good we're probably all gonna get blinded here it's just such a dark gloomy day today so since i've put them in the paper towel this particular seed has started to crack open so it might do a little bit more here so these were seeds that we had in soil. These were the first batch of moringa. So they might still do something. Sometimes seeds are a little more stubborn and they take a little more time. So yeah, Nurse D, you could just search YouTube for how to start an apple tree from seed and you'll get instructions like a 10 minute video, probably a bazillion of them. Yeah, not all PLS because some of our apples, you know, some of the apples at the store have been genetically modified. But um, yeah, you could just take an apple from the store and uh, put them, you know, don't throw away your seeds. Just put them between some paper towels, damp paper towels, and put them in your fridge. And then check on them like in a week or so and see if they've sprouted. And if they've sprouted, put them in a pot with some soil. easy peasy I'm just gonna put these back in here and flatten it back out again I've never done a peach tree PLS like a peach pit because I've never lived in a climate where peach trees do well like I've lived in the Seattle area where peach trees don't do well and um, yeah I've never done a peach tree peaches are one of my favorite fruits but I've never done a peach tree. There. Now I kind of let them kind of wander all over the place. There. Good enough. Good enough. I'm going to actually put this somewhere warm because I realized how cold they were. Yeah, you could try it, PL, PLS. So I would recommend maybe from the store, if it's in your budget, getting an organic Fuji apple. Um, if they have them at your store, like if you have a store that has the organic ones, because then at least they probably are not genetically modified or treated with pesticides or whatever to prevent growth. Because weirdly enough, uh, companies patent seeds. 
So you might have a little better luck with a organic apple, but if it's not in your budget, then just when you have some apples, try it, just try it, you know. And, and if it molds, if your um, seedling molds, like if your paper towel molds, buy yourself a bottle of distilled water. It's because of your water. Like be sure to wash your hands and uh, maybe use a little bit of hand sanity. So make sure your hands are very clean before touching the paper towel, the bag, any of it, and then use distilled water. So if you do get mold um, growing on your paper towel or anything, you just need a more sanitary condition that you could definitely create at home. Just wash your hands, use hand sani, and use distilled water, and make sure all your supplies are as clean as you know you can make them. Like, you know, don't be reusing paper baggies or something. So, just gonna check my time here. That's still kind of a little bit early. Oh, hi, Momo. Momo, you just missed it. <laughs> I just did this. All right, Momo, I'm gonna do this just for you, Momo, again. So, Momo, I the remember how Momo on our, I did fix the date too. Um, I just removed the year. It was easier that way. So remember, Momo, how we had, um, <laughs> it's okay. Um, so remember how we had six seeds that didn't, um, didn't sprout from our Moringa first batch? Well, I've put them, uh, maybe I won't pull them out for you. You could just believe, just believe, Momo. <laughs> I put those six seeds in um, this Ziploc baggie here between some paper towels. And so one's kind of cracked open and we'll just see. So I've kind of just put them here and kind of have abandoned them a bit. But I had them here in my windowsill close to the window and I noticed the bag's really cold. So I'm going to go move it to a warmer place like on top of the fridge and hopefully it'll do better. So yeah, you guys also just read the information. Whatever seeds you're doing, read the information. Some seeds like to sprout in cold spaces like apple trees. And some seeds like a warm space, like this moringa. So I'm just going to throw it on top of the fridge. Yeah, you're very welcome. You know, it's just, you just got to try different things. Like, don't take it, you know, don't think too hard on it or take it too seriously. I'm going to move the little plant lamp back. I'm going to turn it off and move it out of the way because it's very bright. And I'm going to turn on my heater. So when I find, because uh, it is kind of chilly in here. Usually I run my heater for a bit before I live stream, but I forgot that. So I'm going to put this aside because I'll go put this on top of the fridge. Momo, you missed, you missed a bunch of things, Momo. We stratif we did some stratification on some acorn seeds, some oak trees. Go, go put those somewhere. We built something. I've got a little bowl of water that I'm going to open the window again and just toss the rest of the water out. Because this, this is a disaster waiting to happen. Let's see. Uh, so. I'll hang out with you guys for a bit. And just work on some. On the this no you know what momo i'm sorry i'm gonna wrap up i'm pretty tired and i've kind of like i want to paint another layer on these but I'm really tired too so i'm probably going to go have a snack oh that sucks momo so i'm probably gonna go have a snack and um my husband came home early so probably spend some time with him for an hour before the girls come home from school. So you guys all have a really amazing day or night. And this is my Friday. So I won't see you all for quite a while because it's also the start of, oh, okay. PLS, that's a great idea. The unicorn cards. I will find them here. I move them aside for a moment. What a great, great suggestion. You'll, you'll have a little bit of time, Momo. I'm going to pull out unicorn cards. So, but it was, as I was telling you all, this is not only my Friday, but it's the beginning of winter break for my girls. So they're out of school for two weeks. And as you guys know, I don't live stream when they're around. 
So I won't see you guys. Um, and we're also leaving in two days to go to Hiroshima. So I'll be traveling. So definitely, well, I might live stream while traveling, but no promises. All right, Momo, or um, PLS, I'm going to find the unicorn cards. Because I moved them. And I try to keep them close for you. I uh, see that here they are. They're under the glitter glue from the other day. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm super. Oh, let, let me see if I could get this book out. So I'm super excited. Um, hold on. We'll do unicorn cards here, but let's talk about a book first. So if you don't know, Hiroshima is where the U.S. dropped a nuclear bomb on Japan. Killed a bunch of people. Very devastating. But when they dropped the nuclear bomb, which I didn't know this before, but I've learned this since then, the bomb detonated in the air and then went out like covered the ground. So it didn't hit the ground and spread out. It was meant to explode in the air and then spread out, which does make a difference science wise. But when the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, yeah, it killed a lot of people and destroyed a lot of buildings and trees and that, but 170 trees survived the bombing and they're known as the survivor trees. And that is what I'm going to Hiroshima to see. I'm going to see the um, bombing site. Like the, there's a, like an indenture in the ground where the bomb hit. And we're staying like two blocks from that. But then I'm going around and seeing as many of the survivor trees as I can. I've got like a whole map and everything. But. things here. All right, bring these back over here. All right, this is just a journal where I was going to write some notes. But there is a variety of books on the survivor trees. We'll come back to Magic Unicorn cards. So some of them are in Japanese and I cannot um, share them on YouTube. Like I can't read them because I learned when I was reading the 9-11 um, trees that I actually wasn't supposed to be reading those books. Also, by the way, Japan books are backwards and you're supposed to read them like, like you open them this way and read this direction. So this is a lovely book with pictures of them and information about them. There is another Japanese here book about them with some pictures and some information. And then I believe there is this other book, which is also in Japanese. As, as I recall, I have three Japanese books that I've worked on translating some notes in that from and information from. But then there is this really wonderful book, which is available here um, in Japan, actually. Did I get it from the U.S.? No, I got it here. But it's also on Amazon U.S., which is in English and was written by a very dedicated person, David Peterson. And it is super detailed with photos of the trees at their location and maps like where they are and kind of some explanations and what kind of tree it is how far it was from like where the bomb dropped and like how to go find all the trees. And so this is pretty much going to be my guide for wandering around Hiroshima and finding all these trees. And I don't think this one particular one has like the whole map of how spread out they are in the city, but somewhere I have like a whole map of how, like where they are all spread out. So I won't be able to get the, to them all but I'm going to go and see as many as I can. Just 
try and get to the beginning here. Yeah, I think. And there's also an app that has where to go find all the trees, but it's on the phone that I'm live streaming right now. So there is, um, there is that book. I definitely recommend it. If that is something of interest to you, it is an amazing, like if you like a reference book, it's not a storybook, it's a reference book. So if you like references books, it's all the pictures are amazing and all the details about the trees are amazing. So, yeah. And again, it's all in English, which is very helpful. So it's like pictures, information, maps, descriptions of the trees. All right. That's going to be like my Bible on my trip. And the app, which is on my phone, because the app is like a walking tour and will actually talk to you in English or Japan as you approach each tree. And each tree has a, a plaque on it, like a sign on it, letting you know it's a survivor tree and explaining it a little. So yeah, we're gonna go visit, uh, I'm gonna go visit as many trees as I can. And my husband and daughter, uh, they're gonna go on other adventures. They're gonna go like to Deer Island and see some other sites because they don't wanna walk around and find, I'm not gonna get to all of them because some of them are a bit spread out, but um, they don't wanna walk around and look at trees for more than a day. And I plan to walk around and look at trees every minute that I can. Like every minute that I'm awake and functional and can move and stuff. All right. So Nirsty, you are new to my chat. We do, PLS loves these magic unicorn cards. Uh, that's what they're called. They're like Oracle cards. They're just random. They're all positive messages. And so she always asks if I can do them. She always reminds me that I have them and they're just a bit of fun. And I read them for whoever's in the chat. And my little disclaimer is nothing or anything you hear on the internet may or may not be true. And this is for entertainment purposes only. So I feel like PLS is uh, the first one here. So PLS, your, so PLS, this is like, this is going to have to be your not only card for like tonight, tomorrow, but for your holiday. This is your holiday card uh, for like to, to New Year's. For, uh, so Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate to New Year's. I really feel this one for you. So PLS, happy thoughts. It feels happier right now. Think about a memory or something else that makes you smile. Very nice, PLS. Momo, good to see you lurking there. Momo, I'm good to you next. Thank you for uh, hanging out in my chats and that. Wishing you a very happy holiday to you and yours. A very happy new year. If I don't see you guys before then, I'll probably put some edit videos up. So Momo, I feel this is your card. So it is. Imagine, what would you see, feel, and think and hear if your wish came true? So there you go. There you go, Momo. And then Nurse the welcome, and I will pull one for you. I see one of my unicorns is upside down. So I feel like this one's for you, Nurse D. Pets. You love and understand animals. So there you go, Nurse D. Welcome to your, your first magic unicorn card i'll give the chat a moment for anyone else to speak up i'm not reading cards for lurkers today so if you want your end of if you want your end of the year christmas holiday magic unicorn card you gotta have to speak up and chat oh thanks momo we usually we do a pretty low-key christmas uh you did see the christmas chicken right oh my gosh where'd it go uh, you know what, if I find um, where I put them, well, I'll take the time to do Christmas catalogs with you guys. So I'll stick around for a bit 
if uh, if I find where I put them. Okay, that's when we did soup. Okay, I found them. They're with the soup. I have like the things I do on live stream box over here. Thank you guys for your magic unicorn card. I will take some time now to talk to you about Japan Christmas. So I guess we're not wrapping up. Thank you for hanging out. Just put those away. Put my stuff away. All right. Stack these up a little bit better. So for Momo or anyone else. So Japan is very unique in the way they celebrate Christmas. That Christmas here is very based on what Japan thinks American Christmas is about. Because the main religion here in Japan is Buddhism or Shintoism. Shintoism is very much like Buddhism and was the original religion to Japan. So they don't normally have Christmas. But Japan really loves, um, I don't know, making up things and making it into something. So Japan as a culture has made up what they think Christmas is. And now, hold on, let me turn off my heater here. Because now I'm all warmed up. It just got chilled earlier. All right. So this is what Japan thinks Christmas is or should be. Yeah, yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about Christmas cake. So this is a little bit of a promotion here. And I just want to make sure you guys can see good. And hold on, I'll get rid of uh, that um, that thing. Okay, that worked. Make sure it goes away. All right, so yes, Momo. Because <laughs> this is, I got, I, I lost my previous one. I think I threw it away. This is what Japan thinks Christmas is. They think it's about presents, about Christmas cake. Okay, so I'll use my little paintbrush here. Presents, Christmas cake pizza, I guess, and then Christmas chicken. And they're really into Christmas chicken. So you have to pre-order your Christmas chicken. Like we have KFC here, which Japan thinks KFC is amazing. I don't know what they're on about. And probably KFC is sold out of chicken pre-orders for Christmas. This is if you want to order directly from 7-Eleven. So they have this whole spectacle of, and it's not just any chicken, it is fried chicken. And I guess now they're doing a little bit like of a, like a, like a wing sort of thing. And Japan really likes dark meat chicken. It's very hard to actually find white meat chicken. I think they throw away white meat chicken in Japan. Cause it, or they process it into soups or something. So almost all fried chicken is dark meat. And then we have the Christmas cakes. And the last time I went through this, there was quite a bit. And I'm just going to kind of speed through it so we could get through the other catalogs. 
but Christmas cake is also a big thing in Japan. Now that won't sell out the day of Christmas. We're going to walk to the store and get us a um, Christmas cake. And I'll show you the one that we usually get. So we usually get a Christmas cake that looks like, you know, like one of these. This is a very traditional looking Japan Christmas cake with the strawberries on it and the frosting. And there's always like a little sign that says Merry Christmas. It's usually almost like a yellow cake or a shortbread cake. And there's usually like some frosting or some whipped cream inside and then um, some strawberries and strawberries on top and then candles. <laughs> That's the best part. I don't know why, but it, they always come with three candles, colored candles. So every year, my younger daughter makes up a song about Christmas. Um, <laughs> like, that's what I love about it. But Japan has gotten very flexible with their Christmas cake. So they'll do a different flavors of Christmas cake. This is the chestnut one over here. Chestnuts are very big here in the wintertime. They'll do like a, almost like a, a cheesecake here, like a chocolate. Well, this is a chocolate cake with like a, a um, almost like a gelatin thing. But they'll also do cheesecake, a lot of um, like um, mousse type cakes. So this is a cheesecake here. And I did last time we were here, I did look up what the price on these were, like the exchange rate. They're like about... 25 to 35 or 40 dollars us so sometimes you'll get little characters on them so yes christmas cake is a huge thing here you could get if you can't decide which kind you could get one that has a bunch of different like flavors like a bunch of different slices you could get characters cakes this is a um, character named cinero it's supposed to be a white bunny so yeah, Christmas cake, super popular here. Character cakes, sample cakes. Cakes is a big, Christmas cake is a big thing. So yeah, chicken. Um, sometimes they'll do like little meat platters. This is, but they're not so popular. This is like some kind of fill in, like suggestion for them to make money. Chicken, fried chicken and pizza and Christmas cake. And I think this 7-Eleven has the pizza. Yes, yes. All right, so Japan really loves variety pizza as well. So this is like four slices of four different kinds of pizza. You can order these. We have Domino's here and Pizza Hut, and year round they'll have pizza, but they put stuff like salmon and shrimp and the really weird pizza is potatoes. They'll put potatoes, like sliced potatoes on pizza and um, crab on pizza and different things. So yeah, pizza, chicken, and Christmas cake. Just one Christmas cake. And then, you know, they have some alcohol and some bread. And then this is kind of your order form for that. And this shows you the size of the Christmas cakes. So they're not very big, like here's my hand. I know, I know I've got, everyone on the internet makes fun of my hands, whatever. But um, you can see, like, they're not big. This is the smallest cake up to the largest here. So you could get a very small cake or you could get a big cake. Now, I did grab some other brochures while we were out, and I'm not sure what they are. So I'm just going to take a quick look. I think this is just a stationery. So it's very important for the new year to order your new year cards and your stationery. So we might look at this later, but just lots of stationery. I think this whole thing's about stationery. And I think this next year, I'm guessing, is the year of the dragon because there's a lot of dragons in here. So like for Chinese New Year, I think it's the year of the dragon. No, no, not so much pepperoni pizza. I could get a pepperoni pizza from Domino's, but not so much. So I believe this is like Christmas and New Year's food. And I love how, like, you just can get these, like, catalogs and sit here and plan. Like, I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember, mm, like, uh, the Sears and Robux catalog. And, like, your parents would sit and look through it and pick out things to order. And um, 
That's what it reminds me a lot of. So I believe this is, this is not really New Year's or Christmas. This is just like a general like party ordering catalog. Because it's just a variety of things. It's not specific to Christmas or New Year's. It's just like, like any specialty food that you want. I'm seeing if it has a section about either holiday. So like, yeah, if you just have any kind of general party planning needs. I was hoping we could get like a New Year's catalog here. So I'm just going to do my best to kind of maybe look ahead. Oh, these are also, so a big thing to do is to order, this is gifts. So Japan has, this is what it is. This is a gift catalog. So Japan really loves to give the gift of food to each other. And you buy like boxes. So that's what a lot of this is, is you can give fresh food to people and they have what here they have. I'll have to buy some and put it like in a video or something or go to the store and video it. A huge thing is gift fruit. And gift fruit is like when they pick the fruit that is like the best of the best, except it's ridiculously crazy expensive. Like a cantaloupe will cost you 50 or $60 because it's a special cantaloupe because it's a gift cantaloupe and gift fruit is a whole thing so these are different gifts you could give to people that's why I know it's gifts because now it's showing like the how it's boxed up so you can send it to people so you can send food to people like gifts to people gift food yeah but they don't have any of the fruit in here that's stuff that I guess you have to pick out and see they're getting in like to drinks and alcohol and flowers and that so you can get all your gift food and alcohol needs to give to people. All right, so that's that catalog. And this one here, this is traditional Japanese New Year's. So for them, yeah, it's kind of like Japan's ideal of Hickory Farms, except like, like if Hickory Farms started snorting cocaine, it's Hickory Farms on cocaine. <laughs> that's what it is. Because <laughs> I think maybe Hickory Farms actually took the ideal from Japan because Japan's a much older country and this tradition's been around for a long time. So maybe Hickory Farms visited Japan and then kind of scaled it down to a um, to a to a more reasonable, you know, not so like like um, epic kind of level. So this is Japan New Year's. And what Japan does for New Year's, because that is actually a holiday, like a religious holiday they celebrate, is that they prepare food in advance. And usually in these kind of almost sampler things, because the ideal is, is it's supposed to be like one bite per person. And a lot of the food will be like preserved or dried items because they spend days preparing this food because New Year's is their biggest celebration of the year their biggest religious holiday it's all about starting a new year like a like a rebirth or a refresh or like starting starting fresh so that's when they really have their gatherings and you want to have all this food in advance so you can have a multi-day celebration usually it's multiple days I don't know how many days and I forget the exact phrasing for this because I was going to look it up. I forget what these plates are called, but this is supposed to be put out like for everyone to kind of nibble on all your, not your friends so much, but family. It's all about family, not friends. They don't really have friends parties. They have family parties. So it's about all your family coming and everyone can have a little bite. So this is like for a, you know, for a small family of three or whatever. And hopefully this whole catalog will show different ones of, of um, these different things. Good. All right. So, yeah. So here's kind of what you do is you will end up ordering like you'll get like a whole bunch of like sets of sampler plates. And I don't know what all these items are. I know I've looked into them before. I know that the squid is very common and a lot of pickled like a lot of vinegar sort of things yeah kind of like wiping a clean slate like 
a refresh and you're supposed to watch I think like you're supposed to watch the last sunset of the year and then wake up early on New Year's Day and watch the first sunrise of the year. So yeah, they make all these little plates here. I see like you'll find the squid common in all of them or the shrimp, the shrimp in them. And all the different foods have different meanings. Like it's very, um, very, like there's a lot of like cultural representation in the different food items and the, the different items have different meanings. So as a, like, you know, a Japanese person would be looking at this and like they would like remember growing up with, that's why they have so many different types of sets because different Japan communities have different kind of um, like traditions. Like they're very traditional. And this is just about noodles. And of course, you know, no meal would be complete without your, your backup option of pizza. But see, not so many cakes here for New Year's. Always alcohol though. So this little catalog's very short. I think this is just a flyer for alcohol. I just grabbed all the flyers they had and then a, a shorter brochure. This is like just a little, a little bento box. I think this is if you're alone for New Year's, you could just order just a, a little, a little plate just for you, a little bento just for you. If you're alone for New Year's, like if you live far from your family. Oh, this is some, um, I was going to make my windowsill here like a red sparkle. I got this red sparkle contact paper, but I didn't get to it yet. And I have more. I have a bunch of sheets of it. Oh, I have a whole pack. See, right here underneath. And then, and then I think this is another stationary. Stationary. Like, yeah, another little stationary book. Japan really likes their stationary. They like... Uh, making like cards and that to send to each other or something I don't even know so there you go oh yeah yeah I don't stay up till midnight so there we go we read the cards I showed you guys Christmas chicken and Christmas cake my family I don't like fried chicken so we won't be getting Christmas chicken we might get Christmas pizza but probably not. But we will go over to the store that because it's probably a delay because it'll be so busy. But we will go and get a Christmas cake for sure the day of the store with the candles and that. And put the candles in it. We don't know why. We don't know why. Put the candles in it. And then um, and then <laughs> probably make up, you know, the Christmas song. So yeah, we'll get a very traditional looking Christmas cake. Uh, so there you guys go. I'm going to wrap up now because now it's probably getting closer to time for my daughters to get home. Yeah. Well, no, I still got an hour till they come home, but I'm going to go spend time with my husband. So if I do not have another live stream until after they go back to school, which it will be after New Year's, I wish you all a very wonderful holiday season and a very happy New Year. I hope you have lots of wonderful time with your family making memories and don't stress over all the things. Just enjoy the moments and I'll catch you all next time.